Good morning, people. Welcome back to another video. How are you all doing today? Uh, I've just got out of the shower, as you can tell, with my scruffy, scruffy hair. Um, but I thought I'd jump on this morning because I woke up quite early and I was feeling very productive and I was in the mood for a good old chat about Manchester City Football Club and all the news from across the world of Manchester City because, obviously, football never really sleeps, does it? It never really rests. It always carries on. Uh, it's good to see so many people here already as well. Do us a massive favour. Give this video a like if you don't mind. Um, hello to many people already here who's here we got the crazy pianist here <laughs> crazy pianist the citizen uh we got shoko we got tafaro we got mclovin mclovin's in the chat we've got emmanuel abuchi uh cgn 007 uh devraj um Zeref, richard and so many other people the dave class as well good morning mate um Fuck that, Dave. Fuck that. Maybe we'll chat about it in a little bit. Uh, but hello to everyone joining in this morning for a little bit of a chat about Manchester City. I've literally only just woken up about half an hour ago. Um, the cam too much exposure. It's a bit bright, isn't it? I need to probably, you know, to be honest, it's the morning sunlight. Um, uh, that's a little bit better, isn't it? There you go. I hadn't turned the um, I hadn't turned the exposure down a bit. Apologies, my bad. Uh, I think that looks a bit better now. Fingers crossed, it does. Uh, Edited it on the fly there. That's how it should be, right? That looks a little bit better. I'm just rushing around this morning. Maybe that and a little bit of light on the front. There we go. Look at that. That looks much better, isn't it? You can actually see me now. Uh, <laughs> um... So basically, these loads are going around uh, the world of Man City, and I thought I'd have, uh, good morning, Mr. Husband. Yeah, I am. I am husband. That's right. I thought that was Nicola in the chat, Canadian blue. Uh, that's much better now, isn't it? You can actually see me in the background. Um, but I thought I'd chat about basically some of the big headlines going around Manchester City at the moment. Um, I wanted to chat personally about Liam Delap being back in training. I also wanted to chat a little bit about the EDS the other day. I'm not sure if you knew, but at the same time, well, the same day that Man City were playing against RB Leipzig, our under 19s played in the UEFA Youth League. Um, and won 5-1, and they were very impressive. I went to that game, and it was an awful, awful lot of fun as well. Um, and as well, basically, um, I also want to chat a little bit about Pep's comments, if I'm being honest, and the Southampton game coming up. There will be a match preview later, of course, but today, I thought I'd just jump on this morning and have a good old chat to you guys about it. I've got my laptop there, my coffee as well. Big up idle hands uh, with the mug here. That was really, really too hot to drink that. I've just literally just boiled it right now. What was I doing? Um, so I'm going to start initially with Liam Delap being back in training. I like this news. I like this news because um, Liam Delap's a fantastic, fantastic young player. It, he hasn't really yet. He's been in training, but not in full training. And full training is essentially... Um, it's like... Uh, it's essentially uh, a lot more physical, a lot more different. Um, it's a lot more aggressive, of course, you can imagine. Like, none of that kind of jogging around the pitch, testing the knees, seeing how they move and all that kind of stuff. No, he's actually back in full-on training with Guardiola, with the rest of the players. And this is kind of encouraging, isn't it? Because, um, as we all know, Liam Delap is a fantastically gifted young footballer. I mean, how how far he'll go, I don't really know. But in general... Um, it's very exciting to see him back because uh, we've all wanted to see him. It's a shame that he wasn't available for pre-season. It's a shame that he wasn't available in general um, early on this season because I feel like he might have actually played some minutes so far. But he's back now and that's kind of all that matters. I'm sure everyone's already chatting, by the way, uh, about the capacity stuff. Like Brian saying, can we let it go as he talks about it? You're actually right, fundamentally, Brian. I just, I just find it funny like you know, the as we say this. like Let's stop talking about the seats when... Um, now, I kind of agree, Brian, in general, but I said my piece yesterday. Did anyone else catch that video I did yesterday? It was bugging the fuck out of me yesterday. I think it was bugging me mainly because I could see I could see how many people were salivating over it, how many journalists and how many media types were so excited just to stick that knife in, you know, Manchester City. And it felt annoying. It was really, really obvious. Like, you could see exactly what they were getting up to. The sun's catching behind me there now. I'm going to have to come close the curtains over there. One second. Um, but... That's a bit better, a little bit better. Um, but basically, it was just annoying me yesterday because you could tell that they were only doing it for clicks. You could tell that they were only doing it to satisfy fan bases of other teams as well. It didn't feel sincere. It was just entirely there just for... Um, just for just basically for the lols, really the lols. None of them actually care. Simon Jordan at Talksport doesn't care about Manchester City's attendance. He doesn't care. It's just a talking point. It's just a, it's just a way to dig at Manchester City, and we all know this. We're not stupid, and that's the thing that always bugs me. Um, people act act like um like it's sincere or good faith argument. It isn't a good faith argument, and largely I understand people want to defend and argue against it. Um. 
Uh, but it's, it's ultimately pointless because it's not going to stop. It isn't going to stop. I mean, we could have 10 games in a row sold out, but as soon as there's one that's quiet, everyone will be like, oh, look at the state of Man City. And that's the point, man. You're watching me in math. Uh, Mohammed, you naughty boy. Uh, funny though. Uh, Dave Kalaz said the video was spot on. Like I said to you on Twitter, I feel like the newer, younger fan is losing that humility we have as fans. So, won't be long until we have another screaming YouTuber like you screaming YouTuber like the others. Probably, mate. But I'll still be here trying to be the reasonable one. Will I manage it? I don't know. I'll probably, I'll probably be washed in a year anyway. No one'll be watching my videos. But you know what? I'm here for now, and I'll try my best to try and be reasonable on the internet. Good morning, uh, the Bill ABC TV. Um, of course, uh, Bill, mate. Just catch me after the game, mate. After a game. Um, Daniel Lloyd Davis, for me, mate, it's comments like this that will leave me feeling closer towards Mancini than Pep. No, I think Mancini definitely gets the PR thing. For what it's worth, with Mancini, I'm very much aware he's good at his own PR. And, like, I really love Mancini, don't get me wrong. I also know he was an absolute arse to all his players. <laughs> like, he was genuinely incredibly rude to all the players, and hence why he left in the end. So, Mancini, great fans, terrible with his staff. Pep, um, great with his players, sometimes misses the mark with his fans. For what it's worth, though, I don't think it was a dig from Pep. I think that's the one thing I want to say is, like, I think it was naive and a bit, like, silly from Pep, but I don't think it was a dig. I think he genuinely meant it as, like, oh, as a positive, but I don't think he understands. I don't think we understand that, you know, these things will be interpreted how they, do, how they are, which is sometimes why I feel like maybe people need to explain it to him at the club. Um... But it is what it is, man. Um, it, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting. Uh, big love to Troy Cotter with the super chat. Uh, says, hope you're well, mate. Love from Melbourne. I'm good, mate. It's morning. It's early here in Manchester. Um, I fancy the chat this morning, so I thought I'd jump on and chat to all you guys. Um, Troy, you're an absolute legend. Uh, big love uh, from Ma sunny Manchester today over to sunny Melbourne, no doubt. I hope you're well over there, mate. I know it's been a difficult time over there in, uh, in Australia. Fingers crossed things look a little bit back to normal for you guys very, very, very soon. Um, uh, thank you as well to everyone watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. Um, yeah, they Jordan, it's not about that, Jordan. I mean, it's... It isn't a sensible topic, though, Aquavis. It isn't a sensible topic. I mean, it. but I don't see any reason why... Um, I don't see any reasons why it's a sensible topic. Genuinely. Like, I don't see what it's got to do with anyone. Like... Like, what's, there's no shame in not having as many fans as someone else or fans not being able to afford it midweek or be able to get there midweek due to working. I don't see... I don't really see what um, what it achieves, really. And it's, it's as I said in the video yesterday, it's just dick measuring. Oh, we've got more fans than you. It's like, okay. So what? Does that validate you more as a person? Does that validate you more as a club? Um, does it validate you more like as an individual? Is Manchester City's success not worth anything because we haven't magicked loads of fans out of nowhere? No, of course, it's, it doesn't mean any of that still. So it, it, I don't see any possible angle other than taking the piss. And if you're taking the piss, then you're being a child because you're taking the piss for not, like, not having as much as someone or something. And that's just the first thing you learn as a child, not to mock someone and be humble and have a little humility about it. So I don't really see any point. I guess I understand. I think Guardiola, I don't know if you meant it in a negative way, so I'm not going to dig at him too much, basically. But I don't think he did mean it in a negative way because why would he? That's what that's what I've always been taught as it was a young person growing up. Um, I've always taught to ask to think about the intentions behind someone's actions and words, um, and try and judge them in the best possible intentions. Um, and then, of course, if you can't come to any other any conclusion, fair enough. But in this in this instance, I have to ask the question: Why would Guardiola try and embarrass Man City's fans? Why would Guardiola try and embarrass the club? Why would he do that unless he didn't mean to? So. That's the most logical solution. Um, there's a thing called Occam's Razor. Occam's Razor, let me get the exact wording up on Occam's Razor. Um, oh, I've got my mum texting me. Um, one second. Occam's Razor. Basically, um, it's, bas it's, ba it's like the solution, lay layman's terms, the simplest explanation is usually the best one. The simplest explanation is usually the best one. So in this instance, it pretty much always is. Do we, do we think Guardiola was trying to take a piss out of Manchester City fans? Or do you think he was actually trying to help a little bit and felt like maybe... Um, 
Uh, late Winslow, like Late Winslow said, Pep was taking out the context. Still no excuse for having full sections empty. There was no full sections empty. There was the fucking away fans there. The away fans was the only section that was fully empty. So what are you on about, mate? What are you on about? There was no full sections empty at all. Show me a photo at any point of these full sections that are empty that wasn't the away fans. The away fans couldn't travel or they didn't travel because of COVID and so on. Um, but either way, there was no... That's the thing that I'm getting about. It, late wins, though. It looks like uh, you've just swallowed all the, the guff. Um, the guff online. Like, you know, like there wasn't any full sections that were empty. I mean, that's there might be some sporadic empty seats knocking about, but that's just categorically not true. It isn't true. I mean, you can, you've seen all the photos and the videos online. Not a single full section was empty at all, other than the away fan section. And the point is, then, um, what do you mean there's no excuse? Are you saying that fans should, fans, we should magic up more fans? Or that fans should afford and pay to every single game? Or fans, um, yeah, it was the away stand. This is what I'm on about, Late Winslow. If you come here and have a go and dig... That big block of fans was the away fans. Like, this is what I mean. People are too busy having a go when they're not actually looking at it intelligently. Like, use your actual... Like, ugh, it annoys me because you're, you're digging out City fans there and it was the away fans that weren't there. So, this is what I get annoyed at and it becomes truth because the internet spreads it and, like, we don't need that, do we? Um... I think for what it's worth, I think the atmosphere can be quiet at games like that. It can be. It can be. And do you know why? As I said in my video yesterday, Pep's football is methodical. It kills. I mean, there's not much. Um, there's not much energy from a game when it's just like it, it, Pep's football isn't a t emotional football, really. Unfortunately, I've been there and like I, I'm a singer at games. I am. I like to get things going, but. We've got we've got relatively we've got an older fan base. It is an older fan base. If you go to the Etihad, it's mainly just um, mainly just old blokes sat there chatting away to the mates, and that's fine. That's how they enjoy football. We don't really have the a lot of a lot of the aggressive, more oh, passionate younger fans that are there yet. Um, we don't. And to be honest, the football is relatively it's so controlled that it becomes. Um, it's become a little bit basically sterile a little bit sometimes. Um, but Dave's right. Dave said the atmosphere of the Etihad, to be honest, has been a bit shite for years, even before Pep. South Stand, the corner of the East, the East, sang, East South Stand, the corner of the East sing, but everyone else is pretty quiet. That's kind of true, unless unless it's a really big game and everyone's up for it emotionally. Um, for what it's worth, like I'm not sure how many people in the chat have been to Main Road, but Main Road was fucking rocking. It was great fun. Uh, like... I think basically we've we've never really fully settled in the Etihad ever. Genuinely, that that's my honest opinion. Like um, a lot of the um, a lot of the, the the friendships and relationships and the singing sections were broke up, but they were. Um, it's never really fully settled, you know. Um, I do think sometimes we we as a fan base we're not really sure how to win. You got to bear in mind. Um, uh, Oh, Harry, the one, what I'm on about, the football is great, but it, it, it's like death by a thousand cuts as opposed to brutal heavy metal football. It's like, um, it's very calm. You sit there and watch it like you watch the theatre. And I, I, football, it does that to you. You find yourself immersed in it and it's not like intensity. It isn't intense football. It's beautiful football, but it's beautiful patterns and mesmeric movement. And then obviously there is the roar as we get closer to goal. But 80% of a Manchester City game is calm. Um... It's interesting. Yeah, I would love to see that as well, Aquavis. And I'm not excusing. I don't think we have the, the loudest fans in the world. I don't. I'm not I'm not naive. Um, but it's a weird concoct. It's a weird as every as always, there's many many reasons behind something like this. I think City genuinely do have an older fan base. I think we do. I, I, I'm convinced if you go and look around the Etihad, it's mainly old blokes, which is fine. And what I mean by old, I mean our dad's age, you know, like 50, 60 plus basically. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I know they're not always the most, you know. Uh, they're not always the most uh, vocal, and which is fine. It's a lot of the younger blokes who like to get pissed and whatever, who will sing more. Is that the football is quite? It's beautiful, but it, I wouldn't say it's intensely passionate or uh, rousing. Always, you know, it can be. Um, it's also we we don't ever really have anything to worry about. Like fans are at the best when they've got a cause or they're, they're emotional or whatever. Um, you know, it's. It's often a little bit sterile. Um, and what I mean by that is like most games, you know you're going to win. Um, there we go. David Owen, 26 and the youngest person in his supporters club. I don't think most fans even join the supporters clubs these more anymore, anymore David. Um, or they do. Um, yeah, I don't think the younger fans even know about it that much. Um, 
But there's lots of issues, basically. I don't think they've handled the moves to the Etihad well as well. Like, we genuinely really, really, were really, really good. Um uh at the at main road in terms of volume and noise and all that kind of stuff but it's it's changed a lot over the years um and i don't think it's been i don't think it was always for the best unfortunately like i feel like we have lost a little bit of energy and all this kind of stuff um but it is what it is man i don't care about liam or Noel's kaushik i don't give a shit about him to be honest mate i don't really care that much about oasis that's my honest opinion sorry pal um but either way let's talk a little bit about um well, Brad says, when I'm in the South, I'm singing most of the games, but when I'm in the family, I'm going to bring my dad. Yeah, I'm pretty quiet. Uh, I just find it weird to be the only one shouting and singing. Brad, you're right, mate. I've sat in the family stand before, and it is quiet. And it's because it's kids and families, man. They don't really sing and scream. Like, they don't. They just sit there and enjoy the game. And But I'm a singer. But you're right. I feel like an idiot as well if I get up and sing at those, you know, when I've sat there as well. Um, <clears throat> South stand always. I do think the... The jet in general. Has anyone ever noticed, by the way, if you're at the game, um, like if we, if we start singing Blue Moon or whatever or any of the chants, have you all noticed everyone goes really out of, out of time, out of sync? Like, I always like, like the song, like the other half of the stadium will be singing the song about four seconds delayed than everyone else. And as a musician, because I was in a musician for years, it used to drive me absolutely mad. And I really noticed it. Um, and I really used to notice how uh, we couldn't stay in time with each other. So songs would die just like that. You would never get a long rendition of a song because it just didn't. Like, everyone went out of time. It's like, some half of the stadium was singing too fast. And so, it's like, I don't know what it is. I, I feel like it, the way um, it echoes around the stadium or something like that. Um, it's not how sound works entirely. What I mean, uh, uh Kondlo, is like, it's like four or five seconds out of time. It's not like the sound travels that slowly, you know? Like, it's just a timing issue. Um, like, I actually agree with Scott Bones. Is the away fans need moving, in my opinion. That gap between the south stand and east stand corner ruins it. I agree. Put the away fans up in the corner somewhere. Not Sorry, up in the top somewhere of the of the east stand or something like that. I don't know. But just put them in. Put put that block of fans at the back, man. Um, put them at the back. Um, oh, Luke Lemire, you absolute legend. Thank you so, so much, mate. Um, really, really, really appreciate that, Luke. Uh, absolute legend with the super chat there. Um, it's more than half a second, Citizen. It's like, it's just... It, I think it's an issue with the stadium, the way it sends the, um, I think it's the way it sends the sound around. I think it deadens it or echoes it or something like that. And it causes, I don't know. Um, Luke, either way, big love for the super chat, Luke. Um, oh, thank you so much, Luke. What a lovely word. Uh, hey, Steve, been subscribed since the start. Watched your videos throughout the uh, hard times in my studies. Um, even chatted to you, even chatted to you in private. Now I'm finally a doctor. Thank you, Nicola, for being there. Luke, I remember. I was chatting to Luke last year. Um, Luke, you're based in the Netherlands, right? Um, during covid and luke was studying to be a doctor and you made it man you fucking made it what a legend a uh, big up luke um absolute legend uh what what a, what a guy man everyone round of applause to luke you're a doctor congrats man you're um you're the best of us mate you're the best of us what a legend luke what a legend um i'm just gonna quickly do something and that's all right everyone i just need to rearrange something here i've realized there we go there we go uh, Luke, thank you so, so much for the support, Luke. Congratulations. You're a doctor, man. You're saving lives. You're an absolute hero. I'm chatting gobshite nonsense on the internet, so I think we know who's winning here, mate. You're winning. Thank you so, so much, man. Um, um, for what it's worth, I don't think Pep should have to apologise to ETL. I think you probably just have to clarify his comments, if that makes sense. Like, someone would have... Cl I don't think he meant to insult us. I, I, I don't think he did. Why would he? Why would he? Um... I think there's a communication. What I will say as well, he speaks in his second language. And I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I guarantee at some point Guardiola's probably said when he was manager of Bayern. I can't prove it because I've not watched every press conference he did at Bayern or Barcelona. But I, I guarantee he's probably said at some point, looking forward to the fans be, being behind the team next Saturday. and we're, It's a big game. I can't wait. And no one's probably even noticed because why would they? Because no one cares. But they care when it's Manchester City. So I reckon... Um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like... It's just a miscommunication. But I think someone does have to speak to Manchester City um, uh, and Guardiola about it, basically. Um, was it? What's your take, Simon Jordan, who said Man City are a failure? I mean, that coming from him, you're right, uh, Orion Man Roy. Uh, Roy, you're right. Simon Jordan's a, just a rent-a-clown. Simon Jordan is a failed thing. He goes and talks about and chats shite. Like, 
I mean, he's obviously he's got his money. He's more successful than me and all that kind of stuff. But fucking hell, man. Who gives a shit about Simon Jordan? I block talk sport because I think it's just in- incendiary nonsense for the sake of it. And I can't be arsed with that that bullshit, man. Um, it's just genuinely, it's bullshit for the sake of it, isn't it? And we all know it. Uh, so fuck Simon Jordan and fuck all that absolute noise. Um, I agree, Harry, the one. I don't think you meant to be insulting at all. Um... The same way Pep would not intentionally slander his players in press conferences, I don't think he would do that to fans. Amalemo, you're right, man. Why would he? Why would he? It doesn't make any sense when you think about it. I think we have to be we have to be um have to be realistic. Um Sharon Jick says I thought the light was back in training for a long time. Yeah, let's chat a little bit about the EDS. Did anyone watch um uh did anyone watch the EDS game the other day, the under nineteens? Um basically, mate, he's been training for a while, uh, Liam Delat, but not uh, fully in training. He's been basically getting his fitness up, but not actually back in like one-to-one match training with Guardiola and the rest of the players. He is finally. My dad actually bumped into him the other day um, at, when my dad's a steward at an under-23s nine, under a 23's game last week. And he asked him, he said, oh, I'm back soon. Uh, I'm back next week, which is obviously this week. So the lap's back in training now. And I think basically City will take a real look at him. Um, I won't. You won't be starting tomorrow, at MCFC London. I don't think you'll be even on the bench, mate. Even being honest, because I don't think we really need him on the bench. Um, but I do think he'll possibly play against Wickham if he gets his fitness up. Maybe, uh, maybe against Wickham. I'm interested to see how um, Guardiola uses him this season. I think. I think there's something in uh, giving him a go, given the fact that we haven't got any strikers other than Ferran Torres now, who's clearly a striker these days. Ferran Torres. Um, and he is an incredible talent, a uh, really, really, really incredible talent. So we'll have to see how he gets on. Um, I'm curious, man. I'm really curious because I really, um, I really, really rate Liam Delap. I think he's a fantastic young player. Honestly, um, the way I see Liam Delap, I honestly think if he'd had the same path as Haaland, i.e. at Mould at 16 over in Norway, and he would have got game time there and scored, I think he would have then got game time, um, uh, game time at Fingy as well. Um, uh, RB Salzburg, you know, and then maybe I, I think he would have scored lots of goals. So I think the only difference, obviously, the difference is plentiful because Haaland's world class. But I think basically the point I'm making is the lap. He's just not had the chances yet. So I'm very interested to see how he gets on. Amalemo says, I think Keiki will be announced soon. Uh, Keiki. But I'm going to call him Keiki. Uh, actually, I think he signed yesterday. Did the vintage signing photo shoot yesterday. Did he really, Amalemo? That's news to me, man. Was that on his, um, was that on his Instagram or something like that? Um, I, I'll do a video on him, actually. I'll do a video on him. I was interested to see how he gets on at Man City. How is Rodri's injury? I didn't know Rodri was injured. That's news to me, man. Um, I didn't know he was injured. Is that like a... I didn't, I didn't, genuinely didn't know he was out. Um, I'd be interested to see there, basically. I mean, I think he'll be all right. Surely he'll be okay. I see uh, Grealish has been talking a lot about... Um, Neymar, I bet you can't wait to play Neymar. I bet you can't wait, you know. Uh, what you'll get from that would be fantastic. Um, Frederick, thank you so much. I don't play uh, Provo. No, I don't, mate. Sorry. I don't really play many football games anymore. I, I just like story games. Um, it was it came off of Ferner. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I think he, he, was, cl- yeah, he was clutching his balls. He was. Yeah, I remember that, actually. Um, let's see how he gets on, man. I, I, it could be a precaution. Sometimes players come off. I mean, I guess we'll know in the press conference today. Guardiola will mention it. He'll bring it up, won't he? Um, if there's anything in it, man. He will. Um... Oh, okay. Nice on my level. Good stalking, man. Uh... That's interesting. Okay, maybe. I, I don't know what's going to go on with Keiki, by the way. No idea, man. No idea. Genuinely. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. What did everyone make about the idea? Um, Mike McGrath at the Telegraph uh, said uh, Guardiola is considering using Phil Foden as a midfielder after playing the 21-year-old in central field during training. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see the slow, gradual return of Phil Foden into midfield. It makes an awful lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, that's where he started out. Um, he's great as a winger. Um, I reckon we'll see... Um, we'll probably see a mixture. Grealish will probably interact every now and then. Um I'm a Lemo. You said he sent me a DM, mate. Is it on his Steam company or is it on Stephen McInerney? Let's have a look, mate. Um, let's have a look. I'm a Lemo. I- I'm looking forward to folding on the pitch in midfield, by the way. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, oh, you'll send me a DM. Sorry, I'm a Lemo. I thought you said you'd send me. Uh, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see. 
I think he's going to be fantastic there uh, as a midfielder, by the way, Foden. I think he will be. I think he's got the... He's matured a little bit now. I think he's got more of a presence. Oh, I'm alone. I found it, mate. Thank you so, so much. Oh, yeah. So he did. So KQ was at the CFA yesterday getting his photo and all that kind of stuff signing his contract. Uh, that's interesting, man. That's interesting. Let's see how he gets on. Let's see how he gets on indeed. Uh, I'm giving you a follow back on Lemo as well. Legend, mate. Um, KD Mifoda's 10. Sheesh. Yeah, what, are the, what, what, what a pairing that is. I have seen the Spider-Man game, MCFC London. I'll be doing a video today. I do videos about games for VGC, by the way. Um, which I, I've got a, a games Twitter, Stephen VGC, which I talk about games a lot more over there. If you want to go follow over there. Um, Abiram, I think we're actually... Uh, I think we've got a Sterling issue coming up, if we're being honest, mate. I do feel like soon we're going to need to have a talk about Sterling, honestly. Um, because I feel like we're... Um, look, the next five games are going to be interesting. We've got Southampton, Wickham, PSG, um, Liverpool, Chelsea. Um, if Sterling is not really massively involved in any of those games, we, we've got a Sterling issue. And what I mean by that is he's not going to be a happy boy. Um, and Pep's going to have to do some magic to keep him happy. Especially given the fact that he's got less than two years left in his contract right now, right? Is that right? Um, yeah, less than two years. Am I right? Or when does Sterling's contract end? Extend end? Sorry, I'm pretty certain he's only got two years left, um, which is a big issue. It's a very big issue. Um, less than two years. That's a. Re I mean, we've got a Sterling issue coming up soon. I mean, like whatever. Regardless, of what everyone thinks. He's a he's a high high quality player at his very best, um, and that he's a valuable player as well at his very best. Um, I know he's lost form a little bit, but Sterling is, you know, there'll be clubs lining up to take Sterling on a free. Put it that way. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how City manage this one because it isn't ideal. I mean, the fact that he's on the bench a lot at the moment, he comes on doesn't play particularly well. Um, who would buy Sterling as well? That they were, instead of waiting for another year and try and get him on a free transfer, um, it's going to be really interesting to see how Guardiola manage, manages this because um, it, it's it isn't an easy situation. It really isn't. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the EDS, by the way, the other day. I thought they were fantastic. James McAtee, if he's not involved um, next week against Wickham. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, but it would be very, very harsh in my personal opinion. Honestly, McAtee was fantastic. Uh, so, so good. Um, honestly, what a gifted young player we've got. The, thing, the problem we've got now at Manchester City, we've got too many young players that are so, so good. We've got, obviously, McAtee, absolutely fantastically gifted young player. Cole Palmer, Liam Delap, Romeo Lavia. There's just too, too many. Uh, obviously, Tommy Doyle's gone alone, so we don't have to worry about him being involved. Um, and... Obviously, we've got a few other players on loan as well. But we've got Sam Adozi as well. He did really well in preseason. Got a bit of fluff in my mouth there. Sorry about that. Um, one of my own hairs, I think. Um, but I, f I feel like um, we're, we're, we're approaching and encroaching into a situation now where some of these players potentially could have, you know, um, could get a go. Um, I'm really hoping we see Cole Palmer get a start next week. Maybe McAtee on the bench. Maybe Adozi will get a chance. The only thing is, this early in the season... I wouldn't be surprised if Guardiola wants certain players to get some game time. I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to see, you know, Sterling actually start, even if it's just Wickham. Um, I'll have to see. I actually really agree, by the way, Ryan. Uh, he's a blend of Foden and David Silva. I, yeah, he's fantastic. Um, it's like David Silva, where he moves the ball, but he's got, like, this Foden ability for goal, and he, he loves playing um, their passes in the way that uh, De Bruyne does. Uh, David Owen, I went to school with Michael Johnson. I think, he, to be honest, mate, Michael Michael was never really cut out for it, I don't think. Uh, and he'd probably admit that himself. He struggled with the pressures of uh, uh, high-level football and he struggled and with family issues and so on. It's difficult, man. It's difficult. But you're right. We have to look after these young players. I think we do, for what it's worth. I think we're probably in a better situation these days and they're more prepared for it. Um, it's But either way, Michael Johnson was such a wasted talent. But he's, the boy struggled and I felt so sorry with his injuries. And it's a, it's a tough profession. Well, you know, it's a, it's tough as well. It's very tough to live life as professional football sometimes with all the expectation. But City are a different club now. We're, we're run very differently, and support is there for the young players. So that's the uh, that's better. It's better these days. Um, but I can't wait to see um how we play against Wickham. I, I'm going to the Wickham game, um, and it's one of the games I'm most looking forward to, really, because I love a Carabao Cup game. I love your youth team game. I love to see how the young players get on. Um. I'm not sure it'll be on TV anywhere, so it might be worth going if you want to, if you're considering it, get down because there's gonna be it's not gonna be on TV anywhere, so there won't be any streams knocking about. Um so I think if you want to watch the Wickham game, go to it is what I will say. Um 
Yeah, Abiram um, and Betty looks like an absolute beast. I mean, does he have the tools to make it? I don't know, mate. But what I will say is there are lots of young players who could potentially make it in Manchester City. I think at centre back we're actually really stacked. You know, um, we've got obviously Mbete. I really, really, really like Callum Doyle. He's doing fantastic things on loan at 17 years old. Um, uh, 17 years old uh, on loan at Sunderland, and he's he's absolutely bossing it. He's six foot three, fast, absolutely fantastically. Um, good technically so so good and of course we've got Harwood Bellis who's on loan playing at Anderlecht you know Anderlecht it's, it's nothing not to be sniffed at man it's not to be sniffed at is it it's a good it's a good place to be playing under Vincent Company. um playing European football as well so you've got uh Howard Bellis we've got Mbete we've got Callum Doyle um of course as well you know um this Finley Burns is a really good player Katonga is meant to be really good one of the players coming through we've got a lot of very um Good players. I think Mbete, for what it's worth, by the way, Laurie, I think he's behind Howard Bellis and Doyle simply because he's not at a loan yet. Uh, so I don't think he'll be on the bench next year. I think actually Callum Doyle would probably have more of a better chance. Maybe Howard Bellis, but I think Callum Doyle is the one I'm most excited about in terms of defenders. Um, But he's really good, for what it's worth. They're all very good. But to me, Callum Doyle is probably the one I'm most excited about. Some, I don't know, something about him, he seems to have a little bit of... A little bit of magic to his game for a defender, which is crazy. Like, um, the way he bursts forward through the centre of the pitch with his power and his pace and confidence. Um, his left foot, he reminds me so much of a young Laporte. Like, so much stylistically. Uh, uh, he's strong, he's fast, he's so confident on the ball. He can ping passes as well. He, to me, is the one that I'm possibly most excited about. But um, we'll have to see. But either way, um, I'm looking forward to the game. I'm looking forward to the next game, man. I'm looking forward to the Wiccan game. Um... So what does everyone expect for the next five games? Um, I'm doing a video today for the Patreon and YouTube second tier members. Um, I'm going to do a video today uh, predicting the next five results. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to do it right after this. Um, what about Ty Soji? To be honest, Akavis, I've not watched enough of Ty Soji. Um, but what I've seen of him, he looks like a poacher. Um, he looks like a very good finisher as well. I don't know if that's enough. Um, we'll have to see. I need to see exactly how he develops i've only seen him a few times but he seems to me just a very good finisher it's going to be difficult because i think if you're going to be a manchester city striker you need to have a little bit more than just finishing i'm not saying he hasn't got anything else but so far i've seen him very much in the right place at the right time kind of striker which is great but obviously you have to have like a bit of magic in your boots to be a manchester city striker um so we'll see by the way saji looks good i've not watched a lot of him so i can't judge him but what i've seen him so far is that he's involved when he needs to be involved, but doesn't look like he would catch Pep's eye, if that makes sense. I might be wrong there, um, but you have to be a certain level special to get a chance from the academy. I'm not sure Soji's special yet, but he's definitely good, so fair play to him. They're all good. They all play for Man City. Um, I, wrote, I really liked as well the other day, Joshua wilson Esbrand. Um, he, he was really good the other day. Uh, a young, we, We've got basically... Uh, Young academy lad. We've got a left back. We've got an actual left back lad. So, <laughs> he, he, he was injured for a year, but I really like him. Genuinely really like him. Very good young player. Uh, and good to see him back in fitness. Oh, Laurie, it's very hard, mate. We've got many players that could be, but it entirely depends on a billion factors who would be in the first team in the next three years. I mean, it depends what, what manager's there. You know, Guardiola isn't one for using young players loads, if we're being honest. Um, it depends whether Guardiola, you know, how, how they develop, whether they get the chances. I'm hoping, I'm hoping personally that we've actually got the space now um, for these young players. I've, I've, I'm starting to think that we maybe do, you know. I feel like we have got the space from these young players to break through. If you're looking at the ages of our squad, like how old is Mahrez? Let's have a look. See, Mahrez is 30 years old, which is fine. So he'd be 31 at the end of the season. Um, Cole Palmer can play in midfield, but he's also so much better out on the right, in my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if we kept Cole Palmer around if he... Um, if he could slowly be groomed into that Mara's replacement, because stylistically, he's almost identical when he plays on the right. Genuinely, almost identical. Gundogan now. Um, uh, Gundogan is... How old's Gundogan? He's... Oops, I've actually got the wrong page there. Gundogan is 30... He's 31 next month, Gundogan. So he's getting a little bit older as well. I, obviously, he's got a couple more years left, but McAtee could easily step into Gundogan's shoes, potentially. You know... Um, I wouldn't be surprised either if, you know, Lavia could step into Fernandinho's shoes if he gets a few chances. You've got... The, there is there is spots for these players. Uh, there is spots for these players. Callum Doyle, I mean, I'm sure Ake at some point will want to leave because he won't get enough first-team football. Um, there is spots for them. 
Uh, so yeah, we, it depends if we give them the chance or not. I, I would I would love City to be aggressive with giving these young players a chance every now. Excuse me. Every now and then to see if they can actually make it. And of course, we haven't got a strike at the moment. Give the laps from game times this season. Let's see if you can be the one. We'll see. Um, what about Carlos Borges? Uh, Carlos Borges looks really good, mate. He's been injured this season, though. Um, he's just I've not seen him this season because he's been injured, unfortunately. Um, so we'll have to wait to see if he gets any more game time. But unfortunately... Um, He's, he's had a slow start to the season, but he looks really skillful. I'm, all, I'm always curious. Um, I'm always curious about um, uh, young fast wingers to see how they get on. Here's some interesting claims. I just saw. Let me see if I can get. Um, let me see if I can get a bit of editing because I just saw a bit of a bit of. One second. Yeah, let me um, go to Twitter because I saw a bit of news about Vlajevic then, actually, interestingly. Uh, that's interesting. I'll go over to here. Um, one second. Oh, wrong screen. Here we go. Let's see if this pulls up. Does it pull up? Yeah. Um, let me just move that around a little bit. But apparently City going back in for Vlajevic, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, well, will we do that? I don't really know. But that's the claims there. Interesting, eh? Uh, according to reports. Man City expected to return for Vlajevic in 2022 with the Fiorentina striker set for a new contract that conclude a release clause. Interesting, man. That's, that's, I don't, I'm not sure that'll happen, let's be honest. But that's uh, the claims there. Um... Very interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't know how that'll go down, if I'm being honest. But yeah, interesting news there. Vlajevic looks good. I think City will go for a striker next summer. I'll be interested to see how it goes down, but I think they will do. Laurie, I've not watched a lot of Vlajevic, so we'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. But if he's that good, we'll see. But interesting, interesting. Let's see how he gets on, man. Let's see how he gets on. Back over to this screen. I kind of slightly botched that there, but it will do. Um... Oh, Jason. City will try and sign a striker, I reckon. Stephen, Gundogan Morris, Jason, does contract to end 2023. God, that's an issue. Abiram's, Abiram's con I'm going to highlight his comment there. Uh, where has he gone, man? That is an issue there. Abiram's comment there says, um, Gundogan Morris and Jesus contracts end 2023. For what it's worth, they will likely extend. Like, Gundogan will probably extend by a year. Uh, Morris might do, might not. Jesus... Um, and Sterling as well, Abiram. So we've got like um, we've got a, f a few players basically there to that could end up leaving. You know, we've got to be we've got to be very realistic about this. Uh, we have to be very realistic. By the way, guys, I'm so close to 100 likes. Hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button. Where am I at with subscribers, man? Right now, I will get to 60k. I might I might do something mad, be like where I give um a copy of FIFA around every 60 every 1,000 subscribers because it means that much to me. I might do that, which is mad, but I might do it on the road to 60k. It's the least I could probably do, actually. Yeah, I might make that official. Um, where am I at? Oh, I need I need 20 more subscribers to get to 57,500. 20 more subscribers. Can we do that? That would be great. 20 more. 20 more. We can do it. Can we do it? Uh, <laughs> probably, probably can't, but we can certainly try. Um... Gundogan to your extension, Morris might be leaving. Um, yeah, I think Gundogan, Morris might leave. He might leave. Sterling might leave. We're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start seeing um, a bit of a change. Ja uh, a change in the squad slowly but surely. But it is what it is, man. Um, are we linked because you'll have a release clause? Probably, mate. Probably. Uh, Jack Grealish is uh, is being allowed in the chat. It's, I'm sure it's not actually Jack Grealish. Imagine if he was. Imagine. Do you reckon footballers ever just sit here and comment away as if they're actually a fan? Do you reckon they do that? I'd be fascinated. I wouldn't be surprised if you do. I would probably do it every now and then. I'd do it for a laugh. I'd probably sit in the dressing room going, watch this now. I'll just troll. I'll troll. I'll probably, I'd probably jump in and be call it like, I'd probably, if I was De Bruyne, I'd jump in and go like, Kyle Walker sucks as my username. And I'd be like, I'd just troll on a live stream and get everyone watching for a laugh. I'd wind him up. Um, I would definitely, definitely do that if I was a footballer. 
Uh, but then, <laughs> I would I would love to have the power that footballers have. I would be absolutely winding everyone up on Twitter all the time. Genuinely, um, I would honestly, I would like. I don't understand how there must be some like really savvy, intelligent footballers you know they could just like genuinely use their power for for bad and good. Like I, I would honestly be trolling everyone on Twitter all the time, all the time, man. I genuinely would do. Um, and it'd be great fun. It'd be great fun. I'd be there. I'd be winding people up. I would be um, 78 pace Kyle Walks, yeah. Um, I mean, Nicole Singh here is the great example of the, the brain dead trolls, unless he's being ironic. Um, uh, if so, either way, Nicole, um, you must be very empty in your life. Uh, oh, we got to the 100 likes. Thank you so, so much. 17 more subscribers, by the way. Uh, Stephen wants to be Mendy. No, I do not want to be Mendy, mate. Fucking no, I'm I'm a good person. Um, I mean, in a good way. I'd be having fun with my power. Uh, um, CT CT till I died in 1994. Um, Callum Doyle and THB replaced Laporte. Okay, Lavia Doyle uh, replaced Fernand Gundamaris, replaced by Palmer, Dozy, Silver, Jesus. That'd be nice, man, wouldn't it? Kyle Walker sucks. <laughs> it's Kyle Walker sucks. Has someone just changed their username? Have you tried? Oh, he's retracted the message. God damn it, Kyle Walker sucks. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Um, no, that's not fun, Sharon. No, fucking hell, mate. Stop being a creep. You absolute little fucking creep. None of that shit. Um, no, I, I'd be I'd be just being like, I'd be winding fans up a little bit on Twitter in a playful way. Um, I'd definitely be challenging um, gobshite celebrities on Twitter. Um, how do you know it was me? Hey, Kyle Walker sucks. <laughs> I mean, he just <laughs> is that Kevin De Bruyne? Like, um, hey, Kev, hey, Kev. I imagine. I know, I know. Kevin De Bruyne browses my Twitter every now and then. It's a true story. I know, which is mad, that isn't it? That's mad. Um, yeah. Stop being weird, Sharon. It's weird, mate. It's very weird. Uh, how much time do you think it will take for City to be a global? business like United look I don't know or care fundamentally mate look as long as Man City I get to go and watch them and, and get to chat about City with you guys and get to enjoy the football that's all I care about you know I don't ultimately I don't really care if City are the biggest club in the world or not I just don't as long as they're, as long as they're my club is that true David Johnson is that actually true about the rule well, what I would say is that the, what I would say with the away fans is they're right in the middle of the noisiest block. Yeah, the rows around like one blocks 108 to like 116. Um, they're right in the middle of that. Um, I'm not sure if that's the noisiest block because because um, the away fans are there or not. But I do feel like we sh we could have the South Stand as a full on Man City wall. But you know, for whatever reason, we don't really do that enough. Uh, any problem with footballers who follow me? Um, is, is, is it time for a flex, lads? Is it time for a flex? I think it's time for a flex. Let's 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 go let's go for the flex. Here we go. How's that for you? Is that prominent enough for you? Uh, <laughs> uh, Phil Foden. That that's a decent flex, right? There's my flex for you. Is that all right? Is he prominent enough? <laughs> um, yeah, that that's I would say that's a relatively decent flex. Just leave that on there. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if this is still the case as well. Yeah, here's, here's another one for you. Watch this. Here's another one. This one's a pretty decent flex as well. I would say, Brahim, my boy, Brahim Diaz. Uh, <laughs> Um, I like that one. Raheem following me as well. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I'm just flexing now. My man Tommy. Uh, Tommy Doyle following me as well. Um, yeah, they're decent ones. I think there's a lot of academy players as well. Academy players often follow. Hence why Phil and Raheem follow, actually, to be honest. They're academy players. and um, um, I've had a quite a few of them following me at some point. Um, which is nice, man. It's nice. It's nice. Is it true that is it true that the stewards don't let our fans sing? That's absolute nonsense, mate. Of course they, of course they let the fans sing. Like that's no, they don't. Sometimes they let them stand up, um, but they do, you know. Um, City youth look up to you. Um, I think the city youth actually. I think the youth players pay more attention to um, 
the videos and the media. And I used to write a lot of blogs about the youth players, so they started following me as a result. I, like, about four or five years ago, I was writing blogs about Man City's academy players, which I might start doing again, actually, because I really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like I'd start need uh, maybe I need to start doing video reactions to the academy games because um and getting my thoughts a little bit more considered about the young players because I, I I enjoy um watching the academy games a lot but I know they watch it and pay attention so um uh, I'm a Lambo. Stephen follows me that means Foden and Brahim indirectly follow me thanks Steve oh no worries man indirectly they do yeah uh but KDB one of my favorite things about like this this tweet here let me find it um let me find this. Where where is it? It's from, from a while back. The thing that I loved. Here we go. This thing here. Watch this. Uh, see this here, Kevin De Bruyne's tweet. He was replied to. So he's replied to Ian Wright and Stephen McInerney. Uh, I'd retweeted that top video there. See it? I'd retweeted that. The only reason that I'm tagged into that is because Kevin De Bruyne was on my profile. Uh, that's how it works. So Kevin De Bruyne uh, <laughs> um, was browsing my profile uh, and replied to that retweet, um, which is mad. So I'm not sure if that, uh, like, you know, Kevin De Bruyne there, um, just casually browsing my Twitter profile. But okay, Kev, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm loving it, mate. I'm loving it. But Kev De Bruyne, like, it's quite weird to think that. Sometimes I sit there and make videos, right, genuinely. Um, and... Um, I, I get consciously aware that the players will read it and stuff like that. So it makes me a little bit subconscious sometimes because I don't want to like slag off the players because too much sometimes because it's I have to bear in mind the human and they read these things and whatever. Um, Phil might be watching right now. Is he in training? I don't know, man. He probably won't be, but don't look. They're only young blokes, aren't they? You got to bear in mind. Like, what do you, what do you do when you're at home? Uh, to close the window because there's a guy with a leaf blower outside. Unless you, can you hear that by the way? Is that really loud outside? It's very loud to me, but the leaf blower's outside. If not, don't worry about it. But they're only young blokes, so what do they do, man? They go home and watch, you know, they go home and watch um, football videos and chat about... They, they, they just watch YouTube on the toilet like the rest of us. I'll, um, I'll close the window anyway. It's annoying me. Done. It was just a lawnmower, actually. It was annoying me a little bit. There we go. Um... Yan Q to replace Walker as he gets older. We'll see. Roy Ferdinand calling as a small club behind the camera. Oh, Ferdinand can grow up, guy. He's a grown man, you know. He's a grown man and he's getting involved in that shit. Do you know what Ferdinand's problem is? He spends too much time around people like Housen. The, you know, the, uh, so he's used to, he thinks um, all that stuff's funny when actually he's a millionaire man mocking City's fans for not, um, for not having enough money or not being plentiful, as if that is embarrassing. It's actually quite embarrassing for a millionaire to go and sit there and do that. But, you know, whatever, mate. Whatever. That's the thing is, like, he doesn't... People like Ferdinand, they don't think about what their words actually mean or what they entail. They just fucking spout this shite and don't realise, actually. Um, he didn't... That's the thing at Abraham. He didn't actually remove Aguero's mural. Ferdinand was lying about that. It had 30 days and it was coming down. And he acted like it was his idea. That's what I mean. He just lies about this bullshit because he thinks it's funny. Like... The mural was always coming down after 30 days and Ferdinand acted like it was his idea to get it taken down. He, he's 40 years old, man. I like, is he 40? Like, I'm 36, so I'm not even that far behind him. But like, like either way, it's like, grow up, man. You're like, you're, you're a grown, fucking grown-ass man. Um, and you're just lying about shit for social media likes. He's 42 years old. He's 43 next month. Lazy nonsense, but you know, I need 17 more subscribers. Can we do it? Can we hit the subscribe button? 17 more to get to 40, 57 um, and a half thousand. ASM does it all the time. Who do you mean? What, who's ASM? Um, thoughts on a dozy if you think you can make it a city. Um, uh, I, I don't think he will is my honest answer not because he doesn't think he's a very good player just because it's very difficult for him to make it um, genuinely um, I would love him to I would love him to but I feel like it's obviously going to be really 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 difficult really really difficult um, 
he's got quality. It could be that, you know, you never really know how well a young player is going to adapt to first-team football until they play more often. But the only problem is it's really stacked in front of him. There's so many players there that are, you know, ahead of him in the pecking order. There's so many players that can play out wide. Like, if you think of who has to be injured for Adozi to start, Gabriel Jesus has to be injured. Sterling has to be injured. Mares, um, who else? Grealish, Foden, probably even Cole Palmer's ahead of him out wide, I reckon. Um, Ferran Torres would play out wide ahead of him. Um, we'd play midfields, so it's like several plays that we'd play ahead of them. We'd probably play Joao Cancelo as a winger before playing Adozi. Whether that's fair or not, we probably would do. And you probably know that's true. Uh, but that's how it is. Um, Delight won't be playing this weekend, the therapist, but I'm glad he's back in training. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that um, he'll be involved uh, against Wickham next week. But guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I might do more early videos. Bernardo as well would play out wide. I forgot De Bruyne would play out wide. Basically, there's a lot of people uh, who are playing out wide. Um, yeah, they do play in opposite sides, Javi, but the point is I'm making is with Guardiola, it's about a hierarchy of plays that he trusts. And I would say he trusts Palmer a little bit more than Adozi. As simple as that, you know. Um, they, they, Guardiola always plays, he has a hierarchy, you know, a confidence and plays and all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll see how it goes down, man. We'll see how it goes down. Um, I think I can get, by the way, I think I can get now the live subscription thing, which is interesting. Let me see if we can do this on the go, uh, the actual live subscriber count. That'd be great if I could. Um, it'd be nice, wouldn't it, if we could get it up on the screen. Um, let me see if I can do this now. I'm going to see if I can actually do it. Uh... I'm curious if we can actually make uh, <laughs> um, the actual. Because I'd love to be able to get the live subscriber account on screen so we can see it going up and down. Is that going to show? Am I back? That was mad. Uh, apologies about that. I, <laughs> I tried to add um, <clears throat> a new link and it just killed OBS. Am I back? Sorry about that, lads. I had no idea what happened. And that was really bloody weird. I just tried to add a new like browser link on this screen and it just killed the killed my um, streaming software. Sorry, I'm back anyway. No worries, Musa. I'm glad you enjoyed the video. But anyway, I think on that point, we probably should leave it there anyway because uh, I've got other stuff to do today. I'm going to go and record a couple of videos and prep for the preview later anyway. Thank you guys for watching. Big love to all of you. You're all absolutely awesome. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and comment. If you want to see more of these early videos, do let me know. I can jump on again uh, nice and early and we can have a good old chat together. Maybe a little bit late in the day, I don't know. But either way, um, if you are a fan, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. I've enjoyed the chat. Thank you to everyone who's come in while I've drank my coffee very slowly this morning. Um, that's, that's a mild coffee now. It's been good fun. Thank you very much. And a bit, guys. See you later.